Will Toyota's $5.6 billion battery plant in Toyota's hybrid era? Nobody likes to be the one behind the wheel when the wheels fall off, especially at an important part of the race. Isn't that true? Well, welcome back to Tech Addicts. And the question to put up right now is, will Toyota only focus on EVs now? The manufacturer of batteries for use in electric cars is becoming an increasingly important area of attention for several automotive manufacturers throughout the globe. The Japanese manufacturer Toyota is following its competitor's lead, and the company's decided to invest $5.6 billion in Japan and the United States to increase the manufacturing of batteries for electric vehicles. Unfortunately for Akio Toyota, the president of Toyota Motor, he was behind the wheel in June when the company was forced to recall its first electric vehicle that was mass-produced for global markets. This was because the local regulators discovered a risk that the wheels on the BZ4X SUV could suddenly fall off. The fact that Toyota, the person, and Toyota, the company, were forced to make a pit stop because of an issue with loose wheels was the only incident that resulted in a loss of face for either company. On the other hand, it would appear that the manufacturer has lost track of its rearview mirror as well. It failed to see that the competitor corporation was not only making progress but was also getting perilously close to surpassing the Japan Inc. logo. It seemed for a very long time that Toyota would be unaffected by the tremor generated by electric vehicles, which were rocking corporate suites from Detroit to the Ruhr. However, this turned out to not be the case. It appeared to be an inevitability that the company that led the industry in the development of hybrid vehicle technology would also be a leader in the development of battery-powered automobiles. Instead, the largest firm in Japan decided to take its time, weighing its chances on hybrid technology that blends fossil fuels and renewable energy sources in the belief that it would be able to dominate the market before electric vehicles became mainstream. The previous week, Toyota made an announcement that resembled an admission of defeat when it announced plans to invest $5.6 billion to increase the production of electric car batteries in both Japan and the United States. This comes at a time when there's a growing demand around the world for environmentally friendly autos. And as a result of adopting the About Face, Toyota now can permanently depart from the Galapagos Islands. This is a reference to a managerial condition that has, on several occasions over the previous few decades, put a stop on the progression of businesses in Japan. There have been far too many instances in which Japan's predisposition for insularity has prevented it from going beyond the water's edge with game-changing innovations that dominate and thrive within the country but languish outside of it. This phenomenon may be best portrayed in the struggle that took place in the 1980s between Sony's Betamax videotape format, which many people thought to be a more sophisticated technology, and the more user-friendly VHS format, which was manufactured by Panasonic and distributed by Sony. Sony did not budge, and after sticking to an internal favorite for an unreasonable amount of time for an unreasonably lengthy period, the business started its decline toward the position of an also-ran. When Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone to the general public for the first time in 2007, the concept was already well established and widely used in Japan. The common people in this region have had access to high-performance cameras for some time now, and these cameras are also included on their internet-capable mobile phones. This has been the case for some time, and Japan Inc. did not consider the potential of merging all of these capabilities into a single, well-designed device, which would compel Apple to play catch-up and surpass them all. This corporate analog of the endemic species that Charles Darwin discovered on the islands off the coast of Ecuador may explain why South Korea's pop music business is rocking the world while Japanese pop music performs in relatively isolated environments. This Galapagos syndrome helps explain, in a variety of different ways, why it took Toyota so long to recognize that electric vehicles and not hybrids are the vehicles of the future. Innovators are sometimes taken aback when a market takes a sudden shift in direction. Innovators who lead one wave of technology disruption don't always anticipate the next one, which can be frustrating for them. Once upon a time, Sony's Walkman was the product that revolutionized the globe, but nowadays Apple's iPod has taken its place. There was a time when it seemed as though Olympus would emerge victorious in the competition to produce the greatest digital camera. The manufacturer of medical equipment constitutes the company's principal focus at present. Toyota's sluggish embrace of reality can be partially explained by the company's stubbornness. The company's early success with hybrid vehicles like the Prius appeared to dampen excitement among boardroom executives to change the company's direction. Instead, the Toyota Group focused its green future vision on hybrids and hydrogen fuel cell cars as the primary means of transportation. 
On the other hand, hybrid mobility is more of a negotiating point than an actual technical aim in and of itself. Why did Nissan Motor decide to make a large investment in electric vehicles, making it the first major Japanese automaker to do so? The rationale for this is unclear, but one of the major possibilities is that it accomplishes accomplishment despite having a top executive who was not of Japanese heritage directing it. This is one of the primary hypotheses. Carlos Gosian is now regarded as persona non grata in the country of Japan, since it's common knowledge that he has evaded prosecution in the past. On the other hand, the groundbreaking Nissan Leaf hasn't exactly lit the sales world on fire. Nevertheless, it's not entirely clear whether or not Toyota's rearview mirror was used to excellent advantage during the decade that Nissan and other companies turned their attention toward the future. Sadly, wasted decades provide a big problem for Japan's economy as a whole in its current state. In the decade that has passed since the Liberal Democrat Democratic Party was reinstated to power, three distinct administrations have succeeded one another in giving the Bank of Japan authority over a devalued yen. Each of these institutions postponed substantial reforms that, if implemented, would have raised pay, reignited creativity, and boosted competitiveness. It's difficult to put a number on how much the large corporation help that was supplied eased the need for disruption in Toyota City because the aid was delivered. For many years, Toyota maintained that consumers did not have a true demand for electric vehicles, that the infrastructure for recharging was not ready for prime time, and that individuals were unable to afford to get rid of internal combustion engines. Even Toyota was unable to disregard the wake-up call that was sent by President Joe Biden of the United States when he came along with it. Now, nobody believes that the tax cuts for electric vehicles of $7,500 that President Biden signed into law last month are adequate to single-handedly herald a turning point globally for the automotive industry. These credits were signed into law by President Biden, but nevertheless, it serves as a sharp reminder that Toyota made poor bets on the road ahead at a time when the basic price of a 2023 Chevrolet Volt is... $25,600. To say that President Biden's pleased with Toyota's decision to invest an additional $2.5 billion in Toyota battery manufacturing in North Carolina would be an understatement. The same may be said about Honda Motor and LG Energy Solution of South Korea joining forces last month to jointly spend $4.4 billion on a new battery manufacturing factory in the United States. According to a story from Nikkei that was published one month ago, Panasonic's increasing the manufacture of batteries in Nevada for Elon Musk's Tesla. Therefore, it's better that Toyota came late than ever. It's fantastic to watch the Japanese company Behemoth turn on its GPS and get back into competition. Let's just make sure everything stays in motion this time, shall we? I think that's going to wrap up today's video, folks. We hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please like it and share it with your friends and family and other automotive fans in your inner circle. And if you have any further comments or thoughts about our video today, please share them with us in the comment space below. We always love to hear from you. Hey, if you also want to make sure you stay plugged in with our channel, all you got to do is press that bell icon on your way out the door, and we will always have the latest updates sent right to you. You can be notified immediately when we have a new update to our channel. Thanks for spending time with us today, and we'll catch up with you in the next one. Have a great day.